So my name's Katrina. Um, I am a primary school trained teacher. Um, although I haven't worked for coming up on two and a half years now. So um, my twins are two and a half next month. Um, they were born at 24 weeks. They were very prem. So um, it has been a long journey um, and we have been in contact with a lot of specialists and things, which is where I've um, got a lot of my information from for today to do with all the fine motor skills and things like that. We've seen physios and we've actually got an appointment with OT tomorrow. Oh, hi, Tam. I hope Skylar's behaving for you this morning so you can watch properly. Um, yeah, so technically my twins are... Um, just over two years old developmentally. So that's what a lot of these um, activities that I've got with me today are based around, but you can easily, uh, modding, you can easily modify them to make them simpler, to make them a little bit more complex if your kids are a little bit older or younger or developmentally need some um, skills built up. So um, I'll talk a little bit about that as well, but Let's get started properly um, in True Happiness Co style and um, I've got a few gratitudes to share with you. I'd love if you'd like to share yours with me in the comments, that would be wonderful. I'll see what you're grateful for on this Tuesday morning. So for me, I've already given her a bit of a shout out, but my first gratitude today is for my mum. So she's been super helpful um, with the kids and she's come over today to keep them out of my hair. So I'm not, um, screaming and carrying on while I'm trying to do this with you guys. So um, thanks to my mum and definitely grateful for her and all of her help. Um, the second one is for the Insight Timer meditation app that I have on my phone. I've only just kind of discovered it a couple of, well, I heard about it when I um, was doing the 21 day challenge um, in January, but I only really um, downloaded it and got involved in it properly a few weeks ago and I'm finding it really great. I love the guided meditation. Um, I listen to it most nights as I go to bed um, and also sometimes during the day when the kids go down for their nap and I just need to kind of reset and um, make sure I have a productive afternoon. So grateful for that app and um, all the free guided meditations that are on there. Um, and I'm always grateful for my kids and they do let me um, experiment on them with all my little ideas and activities and things that I've come across online. So um, they are very patient with me and they also teach me a lot when I think they're going to do an activity the way I want them to and then they do. They don't. They Sorry, they do their own thing. Um, morning, Rachel. Hope you're doing well. Oh, how good is Insight Timer, Beck? I absolutely am loving it and I haven't even discovered a quarter of what's on there, I don't think. Um, okay, so I've introduced my family a little bit um, and the fact that I am a trained primary school teacher. However, a lot of this stuff is for toddlers and you know younger kids, uh, babies even. So it's not a lot that I have been technically trained in or anything. It's just stuff I've picked up along the way um, and when kids get to me in the primary school years and they're missing some of these fine motor skills, then we kind of delve back and um, try and find some things that will strengthen those hand muscles and things like that. So it's mostly stuff that I've come across myself. I'll scroll through Instagram um, and find some ideas on um, play sites and things like that. I do want to point out that um, I don't want to be shaming anyone, but I'm not an Instagram mum. I don't have the fancy playroom and I don't spend a lot of money to get all matching coloured toys and things like that, which I think is great and aesthetically very pleasing. But realistically, I just don't have time for that and I don't have the inclination to do it either. So I'm happy with all my mismatch stuff and my bargain stuff from Kmart and uh, $2 shops and things like that. So... Um, Sensory play and fine motor play doesn't have to be an expensive thing to do. It can be stuff that you've got around the house. It can be recycled egg cartons and boxes and things like that. I do use some consumables, which is not overly environmentally friendly, but, um, you know, we mix it up a little bit and use recyclables as much as we can. Um, but when we're talking about sensory play, we're really just talking about activities that expose our kids to... 
um, explore with their senses. So different um, touch, different taste, different smells, different feels of things, and even just movement and balance uh, and things like that, and sounds, of course. So, um, so I've got my notes in front of me just in case I forget anything. So it's more just about um, us facilitating the um, exploring that the kids are doing and in having, oh, definitely it came up. <laughs> Definitely just providing them with things to explore and um, interact with in different ways. So um, encouraging them to use play as um, a tool to help them learn about the world around them and learn about, they actually learn about scientific processes like mixing different um, different colours and mixing different textures and, you know, sand and water and all things like that. Um, even just play in the bath with cups and different containers that, they can pour things in and out of. So all of that is sensory play. So all of this is stuff that even without even trying, you're probably doing anyway. So uh, as I said, it doesn't have to be expensive. It can be messy. It doesn't have to be messy. That probably depends on your kids. Um, with me, it does sometimes get messy with my two. Um, it should definitely be engaging for them and it should definitely be fun. So this is one thing that I have had to get my head around is that when I, um, you know, my, I might create a little play activity for them and then I give it to them and I think they're going to do and I show them what I want them to do with it and then they just do what they want to do. And it's really hard for me to let them play the wrong way because it's not actually the wrong way. It's just not the way that I designed the activity to be played with but they will do their own thing and they will discover their own things. And um, sometimes they've shown me things that I didn't actually think that activity would be beneficial for. So um, they have their own little ways of making things work for them. Um, I find it's really good to let them, oh, cups in the bath. Oh my gosh, Beck, I know. They just, Kyle will sit there and he'll just pour from one cup into the other. And even when we've emptied the water out, he'll still have a cup of water and he'll just play with that one cup until it's finally tipped out and he's dropped it. So cups in the bath are great. And it's really good for them to learn about like water displacement and stuff, which I know sounds a bit technical for a toddler, but when they get into their primary school years and they end up going to science class, they're going to have a little bit of a head start in understanding that kind of thing. Um... So I tend to have some of these little activities that are really simple and cheap to have around the house. Hey, Rianda. Um, and I have them on hand for those moments when the kids are getting a bit ratty, you're trying to get dinner ready, they're getting under your feet. Um, for me, they're getting into the cupboards and they're pulling stuff out of the freezer and they're a bit out of control sometimes when I'm not giving them my full attention. Oh, thanks, Rianda. That's lovely. Um, so I have these things handy so I can literally just like, shove the activity at them and just let them go and they'll happily explore. Remembering that particularly toddlers do not have a huge attention span. So they might play with it for a few minutes. I think two-year-olds ha supposedly have an attention span between like three to six minutes or something. So that's not a huge amount of time, but depending on what it is and how engaging it is for them and how much that it's uh, matched to their interests, they might stay there a little bit longer or a little bit less, and that's where you just play hit and miss and see what kinds of things that they're into. So, um, okay, so all this kind of sensory play and exploring with their senses helps to create the pathways in the brain. So it's making all of these connections and they're learning about all these little things that are the building blocks when they need to start understanding the world around them and understanding the bigger processes, particularly with science and maths and um, creative thinking and stuff like that. Um, and in the early years, particularly up to the age of three is when these pathways are being created like wildfire, they're just going crazy. So that's when they're picking up the most. So the more that we can do with them when they're little, um, the better because they pick up things a lot more quicker. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I know it certainly takes me longer to um, consolidate my learning now as an adult than it ever did as a kid. Kids just pick things up like that. So, um, oh, the sand and water toys that you pour the water into in the wheel spins. Yes, we actually have one of those suction cupped onto the edge of our bath. So they pour into that as well. And the cogs that all fit together too. They love those. Um, 
So exposing, exposing our kids to, oh, sorry, hazard of the job, food colouring. Um, exposing kids to things that um, let them use multiple senses at a time is even better. So if you can have an activity that is getting them to use their sight and their hearing um, and their smell and their touch as well, so perfect. But you don't need to go crazy. So um, you can, I am going to show you a few things today that um, I have adapted as my kids have got older to become more of like a learning experience as such. But um, overall, the idea is just to have something as um, a sensory play tool. Now, when we talk about fine motor skills, we're talking about the connection that the brain makes with the small muscles in the hand and the fingers and the wrist. So all these things that allow you to manipulate small things and have those really tiny, specific, um, precise movements with fingers and um, turning and wrists and things like that. So when we're talking about fine motor skills, that's what we're talking about, having that connection between the brain and being able to tell your hand and your fingers and your wrist exactly what you want it to do. So things that are going to help that um, and strengthening those muscles is things like squeezing sponges in the bath or using pegs and tongs, anything that is like a squeezing motion. Oh, hey, buddy. You have to stay in there for a little bit longer, okay, matey? Good boy. Yeah, there's a blanket. That's for later. Good boy. Um, they're stuck behind the baby cat. <laughs> um, yeah, so like picking things up, like even doing puzzles and having to turn the pieces around and using that motion to try and fit the puzzle in the way that it goes and using both hands to fit two pieces of a puzzle together maybe. So you're coordinating both sides of the body to fit something together. Um and all of these are really, really become important when kids get to school because you need all of those muscles nice and strong for when it's time to start doing writing. Um, and you can see when kids get to school and they haven't been exposed to a lot of those things um, that they find it really hard to grip the pencil properly and to put enough pressure on the page. So it is important. And even just letting your kids draw and scribble, they don't have to have a perfect pencil grip as a toddler or as a baby, they can do the hand, the fist, or they can hold it however they want, and you can fix that later, but it's more important to get the connection between the brain and the fingers, getting them what they want to do, and then you can work on the proper grip and stuff later. So it's not really about getting them to learn how to write at three years old. Um, even things like doing Lego, dressing their dolls, trying to put their own socks on, trying to do buttons, anything like that that involves little fingers. Um, is great for fine motor, um, building up the strength in the hands. All right, so let's get to some easy little activities. It sounds like a lot, but I've got 12 things to show you. The most exciting one is at the end. So that's when we're going to make some oobleck, which is um, like a slime kind of thing with really cool liquid and solid properties. So if hopefully you can stick around for that. So first thing I'm going to show you is something super, super easy and um, that gifts and things like that are perfect for so it's just these books so this is something i clearly haven't made myself but things that have got like the furry touch so this one's got nice shiny and you can feel the little bumps highly and the different kinds of fur and this one's like just like a felt um i don't know what you would kind of like felt almost and like the short, soft hair, all those dif these different books that you can get with like the sheep and the lions, manes and all the stuff like that you can touch. So, oh, and there's one in here as well. I think I missed it. There's the echidna. The echidna. So that's just, I don't know if you can hear, but it's just like rough bumps. So stuff like that is really good for that touch. And also books like this, I don't know if any of you have got any of these, but they're like these push-pull ones so the kids can use their little fingers to push and pull and things come out of the pages and like comes outside and they've got to use their little fingers to push and pull and around. All right, that's really good for working those little pointer finger muscles. So anything like that is great. Now, next thing is something super, super easy that I only did for the first time last week and my kids loved it. So this is a puzzle that we've got. This is the clock. 
they like spinning that around. But with the pieces, I've just wrapped them individually in foil. So they've got to use their little, I wrapped them quite tight as well. My kids are pretty um, interested in unwrapping things and peeling things. So I wrapped them pretty tight. You can do it however you think get your child needs it. And they just have to unwrap it, pull all the foil off, get the piece out. Oops. My, I've done a clock puzzle because um, my kids are into numbers at the moment and they're starting to try and recognize them. So um, number, I know the six and the nine look the same, but I know the red one's the six. So then I would, for with my kids, because it's like a learning activity, ask them what number it is or what color it is. Um, if they don't know, I tell them. And then I show them where to put it in the puzzle and they have to manipulate it around by holding this with their fingers and try and spin it around until it fits in the place. So there's all the pieces all wrapped up. And um, when we did that for the first time last week, they absolutely loved it. And they've kept asking to do it ever since. And we've only lost one of the pieces. So I'm sure it's under the couch somewhere. So that's the second one. Rachel, my kids love those books when they were younger and the big pop-up picture. Yes, we've got a couple of pop-up picture books, although we did get one of them out this morning and um, it has since been destroyed. So uh, I have to try and fix that one. <laughs> a couple of dinosaurs' heads got ripped off. But yeah, they're so good and they love, this one's a nice shiny pop-up book as well. So anything that's going to draw their attention to the eyes and you can talk about the different colours and things like that are great as well. So the next thing I have got is something that um, I've made myself just with an egg carton. So as I said, I've painted mine because my kids are into colours at the moment. You don't have to paint it. If your kids are younger, um, and you just want them to work on their um, finger muscles. You don't have to paint it or anything like that. And I've got here some pop sticks, coloured pop sticks. So my kids do this as a colour matching game. So they'll pick one up and they'll tell me what colour it is. And then I've just punched a little hole in the middle with the end of the scissors. And they'll pop it in there. And then they'll pick a new one. Tell me what colour it is and then they'll match it up with that. These are a little bit loose now because they've been playing with them for a while. But when you first make it, they're quite tight. So it takes a little bit of effort to, for them to push the pop stick in, which is really good. And I don't know about you, but we go through a lot of eggs. So you can easily make a new one of these every week if you need to, if they get wrecked or um, if the holes start getting too big and they're not using their muscles as much. But they love this colour game. I've had to make two because I have twins, so they need one each. Um, so we do have two of those and you can buy colored pop sticks. I actually just painted these to match with the same color I used to paint those. And it, I did it, I painted actually, I did heaps of stuff up one day when they were having a nap. So it doesn't take that long. Um, and cheap paints, don't go crazy. Um, right, please, if you've got any questions about anything I've shown you so far, just pop them up there and I am keeping an eye on the comments. So um, next one is, this one, which is a very fun one. This is just an old um, like cutlery drainer that we don't use anymore. Uh, you could just use a cardboard box, a cereal box, anything you've got laying around, poke some holes in it. So I turn this one upside down and stick it like that. And then they get these pipe cleaners or chenille sticks, apparently they're called these days. And they just have to poke them in the holes. And again, they love colors, so they like to tell me each what color each one of them is. And what I've noticed is um, my little boy has figured out that he's got to hold it right down close to get it in the hole, whereas my little girl is still holding it like this and trying to get it in from here. And she can do it, but um, it just goes to show that the more exposure they have, the more they will figure out these little tips and tricks and they can do it on their own. You can show them, and I have showed her, but she likes to do things her own way. So she has clearly ignored me and is still doing things her own way like that. And this is another easy one. I just have a bunch of pipe cleaners. Seems like a lot, but don't forget, I've got two kids playing with them all at the same time. So there's gotta be enough to go around. And I usually just messily wrap one around and I keep them handy. And so when they're uh, whinging and crying because I haven't got dinner ready quick enough for them and they're climbing up my legs and things like that I'll say okay come on let's go do colors and they'll run over there and they know where I keep it on top of the tv unit and I just pop this on the ground 
chuck a bunch of pipe cleaners down and they're occupied for a good at least five minutes for me to try and quickly get things organized for them and sometimes it's just even an, enough of a distraction for them to kind of forget that they're getting annoyed with me so then they might finish up with this game and then they'll go and find something else to do so that one we've been loving at the moment i'm just going to uh enjoy a little bit more of my coffee okay so next one is another one with the pipe cleaners i do have just a bunch of these and we reuse them for everything so another one that's not overly environmentally friendly to be honest but um, what i've got in here is just some little cut up straws and i found when i was going through all my classroom stuff when i um, packed up to go on maternity leave I found heaps of arts and crafts stuff that I never used and there was a whole bunch of plastic straws in there. So rather than just throwing them out, um, we're at least going to use them for something. So I've just chopped them up into little pieces like that. These ones are probably a little bit skinny, but they still work. And so we've got our pipe cleaner, chenille stick, if you want to be politically correct. And they just thread them on and they get to push them down. So this is really good for that hand-eye coordination and for gripping it tight, but not too tight, because if they pinch it too tight, they won't be able to get it on. So they've really got to figure out how to do it. If you can um, get your hands on some beads, we do have some a thing of beads somewhere. Uh, we've used those as well, but this is just an easy, quick, cheap one. You don't have to go and buy anything special if you've got some straws laying around. Paper straws would be good, those like nice stripy ones. You could do patterning if your kids are a little bit older. Um, they could learn some patterns. And I oh, wish your kids were young again. <laughs> I have so much fun with doing this as well. So when they sit down there and do their beading, I do it as well. It's very relaxing actually, as long as they're having fun as well, then it's relaxing for everyone. So yeah, you can um, get bigger beads or what I've used to do as well is I used to get a lump of Play-Doh and put it on the kitchen bench and they would stand up on their little step thing and um, put some straws, sticking up or some um, toothpicks with the sharp ends cut off, stuff like that, and give them some penne pasta or some rigatoni pasta and they would do that while I'm cooking and that would keep them occupied and happy as well. Even they just stick the pasta into the Play-Doh and they love that too. So that's good for pressure for using their fingers as well. But there's heaps you can do with beading that don't actually require beads if you don't have any. So what have I got next? Oh. This one is my easiest and probably one of my favorites. I'm definitely trying to enjoy them. It's hard some days, but I do enjoy them. So this one is the easiest one I have. What I've got here is just an old plastic salad bowl that we don't use very often. And I literally, just after they've gone to bed, walk around the playroom and I picked up everything blue I could find. So this is just a whole bunch of blue stuff for them to do some exploration with. So it um, doesn't have to be blue. It doesn't even have to be one color. I did this because um, when they were really getting into colors, everything was green and purple. So they were the only two they could remember. So I thought, okay, let's learn blue. So I just grabbed everything blue. And then every time they pick something up, I'd be like, oh, look, it's a blue lid, blue lid. Oh, a blue ball. Yes, a blue cup. Very good. So every time they took something out, I would be reinforcing that blue. And again, that has become more of a learning thing than anything. Oh, hi, Dave. Twins Daddy is watching. What are you doing? You're on your, lunch, on your morning tea break. Oh, I love you too, babe. Um, so, and again, this is just stuff for them to explore. So when they were playing with it, I had one of them had figured out that that fits in there and she was walking around and pretending to drink out of her cup. My little man put the headband on. He figured out how to get it to sit on his head properly. Then I had someone was balancing this inside and walking around like that. Teens can drive you crazy too. Oh no. I don't know what would be worse, twin toddlers or twin teenagers. I guess I will find out. Um, and you know, we've got a blue brush. I'll put a brush in there. Um, there's a few bits of Lego that they could play with. There is some um, shapes. They were doing some stacking with these little blocks. 
it's just a whole bunch of stuff. And there's even one in here that does music and things like that. Forks, pegs, literally just anything random I could find. So that's good. And again, it doesn't have to be based around colour. It can just be a whole bunch of like some, some hard things, some soft things, some not sharp, sharp, but you know, some square things, some round things. So they just being able to experience all of those different textures and feels. So that one is just so nice and easy and I literally, it takes me five minutes before I go to bed that night and it's ready for them to play with in the morning when they get up. Um, right. Next thing was one I did yesterday. I wasn't quite sure if my kids were ready for this yet, but they gave it a good go. So this is just some basic threading. So I cut up a um, piece of cardboard from, um, that's from those baby mum mum things, the um, baby snacks. And I tied a piece of ribbon one end and I put some sticky tape around the other end. You can use a shoelace if you've got random shoelaces around. You can laminate something and strengthen it up. But really like once I rip this, I'll just make a new one if they enjoy it. And showing them how to put it in the hole and then pull it through the other side. So that was one that, um, this is actually a very good example. This is the example of what my son did with Nanny's help when Nanny was showing him where to put it in and it's done perfectly and beautifully. This is the one my daughter did. <laughs> so this is the one I helped her with and, um, I let her pick whatever hole she wanted to put it in and I helped her pull it all through and she just went to town. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not going to look exactly how you want it to unless you really like get involved and I'm all for my kids just going for it. So that's another one easy. Again, I just use a hole punch, clipped around the sides, um, bit of sticky tape around one end, literally took me two minutes. So really easy. And that's actually quite, they did find it tricky. I think um, it'll definitely be something they'll need to have a bit more practice at before they can do it independently on their own. But, um, you know, never too early to give it a crack. So we tried and um, that is something that they've already asked to do this morning. So they wanted to have another go. Um, okay, we're up to number eight. So we're getting there. How are we for time? Okay, we're good. We'll um, get through this as quick as we can. Okay, so in this one, I have some big pot sticks. Again, you could just use cardboard from a cereal box, um, paper, doesn't matter, but I had some of these laying around um, and some of these little pegs that I painted up because I've made this as a color matching game again for my kids, it doesn't have to be. But I've got these little pegs that they've got to learn to do their pincer grip, pinch, and then figure out that they need to release to get it to stick. This is something my kids are still working on. So they haven't, they quite often just try and put it in like that where they don't have to pinch it and then it obviously just eventually falls out. So that's that really good grip for writing. So um, having that strength in that um, finger there and the thumb is really good. So we've got a whole bunch of colored pegs and we've got a whole bunch. Again, I've got double because I've got two kids. So that seems like a lot, but you don't need to have this much if you've just got one child that's um, working on this kind of stuff. So another one, you can use big pegs. I just had little ones. So that's what I've decided to use. And my kids have got little fingers anyway. So I thought, why not? Um, all right. This is another one of stuff that I have bought, not made at home. So I came across these when I was doing my food shopping at Aldi. <laughs> And um, they're just little foam stickers. So they're little shapes. There's circles, different sizes, circles, shapes, triangles, ovals, all kinds. And um, so one thing is that my little girl is really good at peeling these stickers. Um, my little boy, I give him a head start. So I'll peel a little bit off like that. And he's still got to use his pincer grip and a pincer grip with this one to pull it off. So my little girl actually gets her little nails and she can actually get it started herself. Um, she's very independent. So that's really good just for that little thing. It doesn't have to be these. You can just buy those $2 packets of stickers if you want to, or you can get those colored dots that you can get at the supermarket, um, anything. Anything that's like a little hat that you have to peel it. So this is 
how long it engaged my little girl for um, the first time we got them out. She loved it. My little boy, he um, didn't last as long, but again, um, that's due to different interests, I suppose. He found something else that he would rather do, so off he went. And she stuck with it and she was telling me the colors and the shapes and everything and she was having a great time. So she played with it for a really long time. Um, so that's good for their little finger muscles too. This one is one of my favorite things to make little activities with and it's pom-poms. Pom-poms can be used for everything. They are great. So what I've got here and I finally, finally got my hands on one of these tubs. I don't usually have this. I literally got it um, on the weekend. So I've just put a whole bunch of pom-poms in there. I have done this before where I've added a little bit of water to make them a little bit heavier um, and a little bit um, squishier, if that makes sense, um, for them to pick up. But I've got these little tongs. You get two for $1.50, which is perfect for me when I need two. Um, I've taken the little metal bit off because as little kids play with it, it seems to fall down and they can't open it up. So I give it to them like this because it's that closing motion I want them to be able to do anyway. Um, and they've each got their own little tubs. You can use whatever, a bowl, you can use a piece of paper for them to put it on. It doesn't have to be something you need to go out and buy. Um, and they've got to use their tongs, pick up a pom-pom, transfer it over to, there, easy, done. And um, the, yeah, again, they will play with this for ages, especially if there's water. Um, there's a thousand things you can do with pom-poms. All you need to do is Google it, um, scroll through a play thing on Instagram. You can freeze them in ice blocks and get kids to play with them like that. Um, you can th do threading. You can buy ones that you can do threading with if you want to do threading with pom-poms. You can do colour sorting activities. You can sort them by size. Uh, if your kids are a little bit older, you can do patterning with them. Um, if your kids are a little bit older as well, there are endless possibilities with pom-poms. So I always have um, a bag of pom-poms handy. Um, okay, we are nearly there. I think it may be time for my kitties to come and help me with these last two. So, Mum. Oh, I don't think they can hear me. Give me two seconds. Mum, do you want to bring the kids out now? Alright, here they come. We're ready for the next part. Hello, Princess. Hi. Hello, Mister. Alright, do you want to sit on the blanket? And Mummy's got an activity for you. You want to sit down? Here, you have this. There's your blue bowl and your blue scooper. You come and sit down here, Olivia. So I've just given a them a little bowl and a little um, strainer. Again, you can get them from Kmart. And what have yep. I got in here? here is I've just chopped up some strawberries and apples and oranges and I've got some um, ice cubes that I've frozen with some food coloring in. You don't have to do that part if you don't want to but a little bit more fun and let me just see. Right let me show you what to do. We haven't done this one before. This one's new. Sorry I'll just, um, oops, a little bit too far. Okay so let me show you. You use your scooper and you can go ooh, and put it in your bowl. Tip. Oh, special. And um, my kids do sometimes just flip the container. So that's why I've got a blanket. You got a strawberry? That's apple. You're going to eat it? Yum, yum. Sorry, if it's snack time and they're getting a little bit bored and stuff like that, you can do something like this, which is an easy little thing to do. You don't have to do the ice cream. Orange, good boy. Yummy. Oh, that's cold. What yeah. colour? Yellow, good girl. 
Mmm. Very good. I think what I might do is just take those ice blocks out because they're going to make a huge mess. Is that cold? Yeah, it's cold, isn't it? I might just take the dark coloured ones out. Did you get a strawberry? Can we put the colours in here? There you go. And now you can eat the fruit. Good job. Apple. Good boy. All right. Yeah, it's wet. That's okay. Do you want to use your scooper? You can use this one. Get, get it out of the water. This is another reason, you know, you get the little scoopers and then they sometimes they decide to use them and sometimes they don't. So, yes, I think they're pretty cute too, Rachel. All right, you can keep having snacks. I might actually need a deeper um, container for that, but I was worried they were going to just flip it while I was not paying them enough attention. All right, last one. And this one is probably the most exciting. So this stuff is called oobleck. Um, it's just corn flour and water. But when you mix it in the right quantities, it takes on a liquid form um, if you put your hand in gently. And if you hit it or you try and scoop it quickly, it becomes a solid. So... There's a whole bunch of different recipes, but I just kind of go by feel. So I'm just going to dump some corn flour in here. Is it wet? Is it yummy? Um, okay. And I've just got some water in here that I've put a little bit of blue food colouring in to give it a little bit of um, extra fun. I'm just going to put the camera down. All right, so I'll just go cold, bit by bit. Cold, cold, cold. Is it cold? Cold, cold. All right, so I just go slowly, cold, and I've kept some corn cold, flour in cold, cold, the box cold, just in case cold, I accidentally cold, add too much cold, water. Cold, Is it cold? cold? Oh no, all the all the ice blocks are gone now, honey. So you can see when there's not as much water, there's like big fat clumps. Um, so we're just adding more water slowly until it gets to the right consistency. Oops. Yeah, hazard. Because, oh, because the more you put pressure on it, it goes hard. It is hard to mix. I'm sure there's probably a better way, but this is just how I've always done it because I get the feel of it right. So, so you can see there when I stir it, it's coming out in clumps, but then Mommy. it will just melt. So we're almost there. It's almost the right consistency, I think. Probably a little bit more water. Does it look like your orange piece of orange looks like a boat? All right, so I'll just show you. It's actually really bizarre um, to feel it. And this one is probably a little bit more on the messy side. However, I do do this one inside um, because it's just corn flour and water. And especially if you haven't put as much food coloring in, uh, it's a pretty easy cleanup. Um, it comes off clothes really easily. Um, the only thing is that when you're getting rid of it, if you're tipping it down the sink, you have to make sure that you do it slowly and with a lot of water because you don't want it to be clumping up um, in your pipes. So, and same with if you um, get a lot of it on your kids' clothes or on a blanket or something like that, make sure you rinse it off really, really well in the sink before you put it in your washing machine. So, here we go. You can see that I can slowly put my hands in there very, very easily. But if I was to do that, I can actually pick up a clump on a spoon and then it will just dissolve away. So it's a really interesting texture for kids to play with. Um, I usually just give it to them with a couple of spoons. Today I'm going to put some little animals in. 
These are just some little cheap animals that I got at Kmart. Good old Kmart again. Uh, a couple of forks, a couple of spoons. Let's just get back over here to where the kitties are. Yeah, yeah, painting. It's not painting, but you can play with this one now. We'll get put the fruit away. Oh, you had a lovely time with the fruit. Okay, here we go. Let me just... Here we go. Look, there's some spoons and some forks. Is it dirty? That's okay, because we'll wash it off after. Look, can you get your bugs out of here? Oh. And again, some kids love getting dirty and some don't. But, um... And this is an old blanket, so this is something that I'm very happy for them to get messy and they're not wearing any super super fancy clothes um, and it does take a while for them to get a little bit brave sometimes and get really amongst it so oh you got some animals very special and again this one is just for exploring so yes. you got a snake Oh, and you can see, you know, she's doing it properly and fishing the animals out. He's just pouring it onto his pants. <laughs> so um, not all twins are alike. Do you maybe want to try and keep it in here, maybe? No? He's very into it. Um, so that's all my activities for today. Um, I hope some of you found something useful on there or if you catch a replay... Um, Make sure you chuck a comment on there and let me know if you found anything useful. Um, and if there are any questions uh, about anything that I have shown you today, um, please feel free to ask. I'll keep the video going for another couple of minutes um, and I'll keep checking the comments. So, um, yeah, that's us for today. Do you want to put your snake back in there? We're making a big old mess. <laughs> But, and this is also something that I've really had to come to terms with, that it's okay to make a mess and it's not the end of the world. So, yeah, Rachel, that's right. It is all about fun and it's all about fun and exploring and, um, you know, making all these connections. Yes. So, rabbit, rabbit. Oh, a frog. Yeah, ribbit, ribbit, not a rabbit. <laughs> ribbit, ribbit. That one's actually a beetle. 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 Boom, boom. Using a spoon. Oh, you're putting some, are you putting some in your bowl? That's very clever. Good job. Wait till Nanny sees this. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Nanny's going to have a meltdown. <laughs> it's very fun. Yeah, yeah. That's Olivia's. Wow. That's so fun, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, you've got it. They've got each other's spoons. It's a, that's a problem. Alrighty. Well, if there's no questions, then uh, we will leave it yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And I hope you've enjoyed it, guys. Do you want to say see ya? Yeah. No, up here. Do you want to say see ya? Yeah. See ya, Kyle. Yeah. Good boy. <laughs> Bert. Bert. Oh, Bert. What do you say? Thank you. Thank you. Um, thanks, Rachel. Um. Yeah, hopefully you found it helpful as well. Alrighty, guys, we'll see you next time.